Hello and welcome back. Today we will continue our discussion of root locus design where lecture 4-2 has a focus on phase, lag, and leader compensator design. The objectives of today's lecture are to describe the advantages and disadvantages of lag, lead, PI, PD, and PID compensation to select the appropriate type of compensator to satisfy given design constraints, to implement PI, PD, or PID compensation to improve the transient and steady state response of a control system by satisfying certain design specifications, to implement lag and lead compensation to improve the transient and steady state response of a control system, and to compare the root locus step response and rent response for a compensated and uncompensated system to confirm that the design constraints are satisfied. As you may have observed by now, there are two key branches of the study of control systems. They are analysis and design. Analysis is used to identify system characteristics such as steady state and transient performance. Analysis answers the question, how does it work? The design of a control system involves adding a compensator or controller so that it meets certain steady state and transient constraints and this design responds to the demand, make it work. Up to this point, we have only looked at control system design where we adjusted the loop gain or the open loop gain K. This was an example of proportional control, but now we're going to start looking at systems where proportional control is just not enough in order for it to meet the desired system characteristics. Earlier in the course, root locus design was introduced and the open loop gain K was used to adjust the closed loop poles of the control system to satisfy a given settling time, damping ratio, natural frequency, or steady state error. The gain was used to adjust the transient and steady state response, including stability concurrently. Adjusting the gain to meet certain design requirements is called proportional control. However, when the gain cannot be adjusted to meet the design requirements, it is necessary to add a compensator or controller. In other words, if the design specifications are not on the current root locus, then adjusting the gain will not ever meet the required characteristics. Similar to PID control, lead lag and lag lead compensators can be used to adjust the transient and steady state response independently. Lag lead and lag lead compensators can be implemented using active or passive networks. The advantage of using the passive network, which includes only resistors, inductors, and capacitors, is that it is less expensive and does not require an additional power source for operation, unlike an operational amplifier. However, the disadvantage is that because it is not an ideal compensator, the steady state error is not driven to zero. In order for the steady state error to reduce to zero, the compensator must increase the system type and be an active network such as a PI controller, which we would need an op amp or something like that in order to implement. Figure one provides electrical configuration for the lag, lead, and lead lag compensators. Table one and figure one show various examples of lag, lead, lag, lead, proportional lag and lead compensators. So the first one you see is a series resistor capacitor and another resistor, which is a lag compensator, where GC of S is equal to K times S plus Z lag over S plus P lag. So Z lag is greater than P lag. Then we have a parallel combination of R and C in series with R2, which is a lead comp compensator, where GC of S is K times S plus Z lead over S plus P lead, where P lead is greater than Z lead. And finally, we put these two together to create the lag lead compensator where we essentially multiply the gains of each stage together to get the overall gain. So here we have several examples. The first is proportional control. So assume that the plant is one over S plus one squared and the controller is K. So if K is equal to one, we have a type zero system that has a steady state error of one half. And we see that the closed loop poles are at negative one plus or minus J. And in the last row, we see what the step response of this system looks like. It has a pretty long settling time and a slight overshoot. To make it into a lag compensator, we now have K over S, where K is equal to one. It's a type one system. The benefit of adding the lag compensator is that now the steady state error goes to zero. And we now have poles at negative 0 0.122 plus or minus J 0.745 and negative 1.75. So you see that the step response now does have some overshoot, but it has 
a faster settling time. And finally, we now add a lead compensator where the compensator has to form K times S plus two. So we are back to a type zero system, which means we now have a steady state error again of one third. However, the settling time is much faster, although there is no time to peak in this one. So now let's summarize some of the key points of these different type of controllers. The first key point is that the addition of a pole can reduce steady state error, but the root locus moves to the right and makes a system less stable. And this is our example of a lag compensator. In other words, the lag compensator increases the settling time or the transient response. And the addition of a zero can improve the transient response and the root locus moves to the left which makes the system more stable. This is our example of a lead compensator because it decreases the settling time or the transient response. Steps to design a compensator using root locus. Step one, select K proportional control to satisfy the percent overshoot design requirement. Use the selected K to calculate the original settling time, damping frequency, and steady state error. This is similar to what we did in the prior lecture. Step two, calculate the desired closed loop poles to satisfy the settling time and or damping frequency specification. In other words, the transient response. We also did something similar to this in the last lecture. Step three, calculate the sum of the angles from the open loop transfer function poles and zeros to de the desired closed loop poles. In other words, PS is equal to the sum of the zeros for the desired minus the sum of the poles for the desired. Use the angle criterion to calculate the angle deficiency to put the closed loop poles on the root locus so that the angle of deficiency is plus or minus 180 degrees plus that pole. Step four, the lead compensator must contribute this angle of deficiency. So select the zero for Z lead to cancel out one of the open loop poles, then recalculate the angle of deficiency based upon the new pole with one of the open loop poles gone. The lead compensator must be designed so that P lead contributes this angle. Step five, using the magnitude criterion for the lead compensated system, calculate the compensator gain K lead, where K times GS times GP times H at that desired pole is equal to one. Step six, find the steady state error for the proportional and or lead compensated system. Step seven, calculate the ratio of Z lag to P lag to yield the desired steady state error for the lag lead compensated system. And let P lag be a small value such as 0.1 or 0.01, and then calculate Z lag using the ratio in order to decrease the steady state error. Finally, form the complete compensator, GC of S equal G lag times G lead. Step eight is always to check your work. Check that the steady state design works by calculating the steady state error of the compensate system and check the transient design by checking the root loop locus or the closed loop poles of the compensated system so to check for things such as settling time or time to peak. All right, let's do some examples.